Hello, my name is Professor Darren Shukor, and with me today I've got two of the Gateway to Medicine students who are going to introduce themselves. Z. Hi, my name is Z. I'm from Nottingham, um, but I'm originally from Iraq. I'm Mohammed. Hi, my name is Mohammed, and I'm a commuter. I'm from Dewsbury. Okay, so what we're going to do today is to go to have a little Q&A session. The questions were devised by last year's Gateway to Medicine students, and I asked them to think about what questions they wish they had asked when they were at your stage of planning which course they were going to do, where they wanted to study, and where they wanted to live. So the sections will be divided into three. We'll start off by talking about living and studying in Leeds. Then we'll talk about the transition from studying at school to university. And then finally, we'll cover questions relating to studying on the Gateway to Medicine course. So we'll kick off, first of all, by just um, going to see and to talk about what sort of activities are available for students when they come to study at Leeds. There's actually a lot of activities. So there's a lot of societies, uh, some that are like specific to courses and some to do with general interest, sports, if you like do a normal sport like tennis, basketball, football. Um, one society that I've been closely with this year and part of the committee is the psych society. So it's part of a psychiatry society. We don't just do stuff to do with medicine and psychiatry. There is that, but there's also things about how to look after your mental health in university. And also I'm part of the Arab society and that's because of where I'm from and it's kind of nice to meet people from similar backgrounds to yourself but there is a lot of societies in Leeds. Hamid, you said you know so you live at home, what sort of things are you getting up to sort of outside of your studies? Um, so uh, I'm working in the afternoon so I don't really get much time to participate in societies but on Wednesdays um, generally across the medical course we do have Wednesday afternoons free so for medical students um, the afternoons, there's societies, like sports societies that are particular to medical students uh, to help with timetabling, etc. Um, and I think um, you shouldn't be afraid to sort of start your own society as well. Like I have a friend um, who's Sri Lankan and he's starting his Sri Lankan society next year. So um, if you don't find something that sort of suits you, then by all means you can start your own society as well. Great, thank you. Now, you, because obviously you, you live at home in Dewsbury, and Dewsbury is not that far from Leeds, but um, obviously you come in you know, every day for study. How are you finding sort of the transport and things like that in getting into um, Leeds? <clears throat> so in terms of cost, I think um, it's fine. I just get the monthly pass, which isn't too expensive overall. It, it works out. Um, even in the mornings, I'm not having to set out too early. I think um, the walk from train station to uni is not even 10 minutes. So it's pretty, it's pretty um, manageable. And I think um, I'm, I'm going to continue to commute throughout my time at medical school, I think. So, so how close are you finding then to other things in the city in relation to the campus and where you're staying? So campus is actually quite central to city. It's from um, the Parkinson's building and from the Union. It's about a 15 minute walk into town. And obviously when you're in town, there's a lot of restaurants, there's a lot of bars, there's a lot of shopping places. So there is quite a bit and there's obviously Leeds Trinity Kitchen which is a lot of food places that would suit whatever you want to have. And a lot of the students who live out in the Headingley, I actually live in Headingley um, myself so it's actually not too bad a walk. No. Actually I walked in this morning from, from home and there's a lot of bars and restaurants, it's quite a vibrant um, area, yeah. people living that that area. Where precisely are you living at the moment? So I stay at Central Village and I'm going to continue to live in Central Village Halls of Residence for next year. Um, I found that it was really good in terms of how close it is to the city, how close it is to things like the Worsley building. So the medical school is only about five minute walk. Um, so it's kind of good in the mornings when you have an early start. Uh, Mohammed, obviously not, you're, living, you're living at home, but what about the other places that the, that the students might have talked to you about where they're living? Um, so I think like depending on where what the timetable says, you'll, you'll be in around campus across Gateway Cross. So you'll be in various different buildings. Um, so depending, on average, each accommodation is roughly about 15 minutes, you'd say on average, so wherever you are on campus. So it's, it's manageable. And I think most students get here um, without, without much hassle in the mornings. 
I may come on when I talk about the hassle of getting in on time um, <laughs> later on and some of them, the other questions. Um, see, what do you find, what do you find like the cost of living is like, because you live in um, Nottingham, do you find it's yeah. about the same, more expensive, less? I think it's around similar. I think it would be different if you have come from somewhere like uh, London, but generally the living here, because obviously high street shops, things like Tesco's, Morrison's, they're all the same price as where you normally are at home. And Nottingham is not actually that far away from Leeds. I do, however, find the cost of buses cheaper than the one in Nottingham. But I think it's just to do with companies and where you're from. But generally, it's just about the same as the rest of England, really. Right, thank you. Um, Mohammed, you've mentioned that you, should, you, know, you have part-time jobs which you do in, in the afternoon. Um, how do you find that balancing, that the, the opportunities to work versus your studies? Um, I think particularly on the gateway course, I think it's very manageable to um, work, especially in the evenings. Like I've throughout my whole year, I've been working in the evenings. Um, <clears throat> I think as long as you stay on top of your work and you, you utilise the self-directed lessons that have been timetabled for you, I think you wouldn't have a problem working part-time. Even, even if it's one day on the weekend and a couple of evenings, it's completely manageable. Good. Let's, that takes us nicely into the transition from studying at school into studying at university and some of the difficulties with that. Uh, See, so how do you, do you find the teaching style has differed from when you were in, because you were in a sixth form college before, weren't you? How yeah. that was different to studying at university? So I found in the beginning when I first moved here, um, because I'd also come from a gap year, so I had a bit of a break from studying, that it was a lot more independent. And I would assume even if you came from school, there is, um, you know, not to scare you or anything, there is high expectations of you doing independent work. You know, like Mohammed said, there is self-directed learning and you are timetabled for these um, and you are expected to do the prep work um, and it is very important that you do do the prep work so I would say it's about 75 percent you know you you know your own work and your own research um, and the rest is really what you're taught. How have you found the transition in studying from school Mohammed? Um, I think because it's a gateway course and because there's um, a smaller number of people compared to year one and BCHB um, I think you, you still have that sort of communication and um, that contact with your tutors uh, and I think that's quite good um, that's been pretty useful throughout the year um, and I think like Z said as well the self-directed learning as long as you're using as long as you're using your timetable sessions properly you wouldn't need to do much work outside of 9 to 5 depending on uh, the timetable. And thank you. Um, there are four modules as part of the course, as you both yeah. know, and one of them is the whole transition to medicine. Yeah. What sort of study skills have you found it useful that we've taught you in that module? I think it's the introduction to how things like academic writing at university works. Um, we had a lot of workshops on referencing, on what sources to cite and how to do your research, which I found very useful. There is also on that module, we did two reflective essays. And prior to starting university and Gateway to Medicine, I haven't really done much reflective pieces of writing. Um, and I do anticipate that we will be doing a lot of reflection as we go on throughout the MBCHB. So it was kind of good to have that introduction to reflective writing and academic writing to help us really be prepared for the MBCHB. Mohammed, was it, it did it come as a bit of a surprise to you, just in terms of how much writing there was, the type of writing we were expecting you to do? Yeah, um, I didn't think there'd be too much writing on the gateway course when I first started. I thought it'd be more medicine, more science related. But whilst we do have science and your modules, sort of theory and etc., um, I think there was a good balance. But there was a lot of writing, so just be ready, <laughs> be ready to start writing. Uh, keep your keep your knowledge from GCSEs GCSE and A-levels uh, intact. Um, and I think in transition to medicine, we learned a lot of like skills in terms of like resilience. Um, we learned about the imposter syndrome and things like that, which is very common um, throughout, medical, throughout the medical profession. So I think it sort of prepares you for MPCHP. And even in terms of like, we had presentations in terms of uh, the, like, pre uh, assignments, which were like, you had to present in front of class or as part of groups. And I think um, that's quite good because it sort of builds your skills on becoming a confident speaker, um, comfortable with your cohort and 
with pu- with the public and other people as well. So I think. Yeah, I think I've noticed so <coughs> that all of you have grown an awful lot during the year. And one of the things is around the confidence in speaking. I think that first week, if I'd asked any of you to stand up and you know to say something about yourself or what and answer a question i think everybody would just shrunk in horror whereas you know towards the end of the course when again i was asking you to do presentations or working in groups and to talk about your answers i could see the confidence had grown throughout the year yeah i would agree and i think if also if anything it's kind of good that you having personal tutors um at Leeds, so it's very important that you do engage with your personal tutors. It's very important that you uh, talk if you're struggling with a topic or struggling with an assignment. You know, like uh, Mohammed said, there is a lot, and it is um, it is manageable if you are well planner and you also speak if you are struggling. Um, put in things like. Uh, mitigation and applying for extension, utilizing them really um, where they are needed, it might be a good idea. And I definitely have benefited from that in the past year. Are there any tips you want to pass, pass on in relation to how you've stayed organized um, through the year? So I recommend, and I, I feel like that Microsoft To Do should really sponsor me how much I talk about it. So Microsoft To Do, it's an amazing app. And what I love about it is that you can have like a lot of different to-do lists. So what I do is that obviously it's digital, it's on your phone, it's very easily accessible. Um, And what I do is for each module have a to-do list of the assignments and lectures that might need to be doing. Um, And every single day you can go on it and say, if I'm feeling today like I'm a bit under the weather, I can't really do a lot heavy content, heavy stuff, then I can move the stuff that I think I'm a bit more manageable to my to-do and I make sure that there's three things to do every day. And if I get through these, then it's kind of easy and manageable, really. Planning is very, very important in this course. Right, thank you, yes. It, it is a big jump from school um, to university, but I, I think it's a softer landing, yeah. hopefully, than going to MBCHB. We've got 46 students this year. Um, you know, next year, there probably is going to be nearly 300 students. It's a big jump within that. So while there is obviously still personal tutors in place and support systems, hopefully we put more support uh, in place. And, and you're a year rep, aren't you, Mohammed? And yeah, so. um, definitely. I think um, if you are ever struggling or you are ever confused, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Email the um, Amoji leads, email um, student support. Get in, get in contact with your academic personal tutors. Um, and I think in terms of the jump to, it, it's a definitely a softer softer jump. I think it sort of prepares you, it gives you time to sort of get used to these, get used to the university lifestyle, um, what's expected from you. Um, and it definitely does prepare you to the MBCHB. So don't feel as if, um, oh, I'm doing a, a gateway year, I'm not there yet. Uh, you definitely are, you just need to make sure that, you, if, as long as you utilize everything, throughout the year, I think uh, it's very beneficial. And we do hold a hand that we don't get it right all the time. And again, that's partly what the student reps have done. There have been times when you've come to us and said, this isn't right, yeah. or that, you know, in confidence, a particular student is struggling. Things like, we, we forgot to timetable Eid yeah. correctly this year, and you point that to our attention, and we got it sorted for you. Yeah, so that's another thing as well. So um, there is, we, have, we have the Medical School Representative Council, so that's, I'm, a, I'm currently the gateway member for the, uh, the gate representative for this year and I'll also be your representative until the new one uh, the new one of you two will be elected uh, one of you two will be elected so feel free to get in touch with me until the elections happen um, and again you can go to your reps as well if you don't feel comfortable talking to a member of staff academic staff your personal tutors you can get in touch with your peers um, and we'll definitely um, share that with um, the modulees we also get invited to the cost management team meetings um, and that's we've got all the module leads there, um, the admin staff, and we get to give our side, give our give our view, and it's been quite reciprocated as well. Uh, we've they've uh, whatever feedback we've get, we've been given uh, with moderation from, and obviously we sometimes as students we uh, think this is not great or this um, this isn't the best, but sometimes when you hear the professors or the module leads outlook on things. Sometimes it does put a bit, a bit more perspective onto why decisions, some decisions, some decisions are the way they are. Um, but with that being said, uh, definitely do get in touch uh, with anybody 
if you have any changes or if you think something could be improved in the, the course as well. So I think over the year we have, we have shared a lot of the students' feedback. <coughs> I think one of the things Mohammed mentioned so earlier on was around you know getting here on time and things like that. Obviously, the public have got very high expectations of doctors. We're talking about how we try to instill that idea of professionalism at an early stage. So, it's, professionalism is very heavy actually on this course. There is a whole module called Preparation for Professional Practice. Um, and you are expected to be on time. You are expected to inform people if there is any circumstances where you can't attend a, a lecture or a teaching um, there is a high high expectations on you, how you act and how you carry yourself as doctors not to scare you or anything but I think it would be expected you know you would want your doctors to be professional um, and there is actually a lot of teaching as well about what it is like to work in the NHS. So I think in the beginning, just like Mohammed, I expected there was going to be a lot of science in this course. But what I found out sort of early on from semester one is that we actually get exposed to the NHS as an organisation, how it operates, how it works. Um, and you know, you might think, actually, how is this relevant? But it's very, very relevant to your practice as a doctor in the future. Um, so yeah, you learn a lot about third sector organisation, about the other healthcare professionals that are involved. And you also get a chance to meet the patient carer community, the PCC, which is really, really beneficial to sort of give you that perspective from the other end, you know, it's always good. We always speak to doctors and talk to doctors, but it's kind of good as well sometimes to speak to the others who run the NHS and walk, work within the NHS. So move nicely into the final section about you know, studying in terms of gateway. So we talk, you both talked about some of your expectations about how much science would be involved and actually it's perhaps less than you were expecting. But Hamad, you didn't study bi biology at A-level. How have you found that transition? Um, yeah, so I didn't study biology at A-level, but um, I think it shouldn't be something that you should be scared about. If you haven't done biology, let your, let your uh, module leader know. And I think... Um, as long as you timetable um, and as long as you ask for support from your peers, uh, make, again, make use of them self-directed um, learning sessions that you have. Um, it's very manageable. Your, the first sort of semester is to do with sort of A-level biology, a little bit more than A-level. And then the second semester is to do more with the body systems, etc. cetera. Um, whilst it is a lot of content to take in, um, I think um, it's, it's, manageable and I didn't I didn't have I always I struggled I struggled um, at some points but as I we with um, foundational life sciences we sort of had an online session then we had a tutorial uh, a tutorial so we got to go in and sort of speak to our lecturers ask any questions that we didn't understand from um, the live lesson so I think that was very beneficial and I'll take that opportunity and use it to uh, your uh, use it to the best of your ability and ask your questions. If you are unsure about anything, make sure you get that out. Thank you. Um, I think uh, what a lot of people might be wondering is also what pre-required knowledge there is. Is there anything that you really <coughs> study in your preparation needs before you come or expectation of knowledge that you wish you had? And I think it's because it's called foundational life sciences, it might be beneficial to know the foundations of things like cells and how they work. But you do get a lot of teaching and the teaching is quite detailed and you get taught by the professionals. So, for example, um, I remember when we were doing the, the reproductive system, we had a gynecologist who taught us. When we were doing the cardiac system, we had a cardiologist who taught us. So they are experts and you can always ask to them and see if there is any anything that you could be learning about but I wouldn't necessarily say that you have to have prior knowledge of science as a whole and be fully medically qualified to be able to do well on this course I think if anything you need to be quite comfortable with being challenged with your knowledge and also you can experiment with the learning style um, I in the first semester I experimented with what way works and obviously different modules will require different skills so things like foundation life sciences I found it really good to have things like flashcards but it might not work for you it's always good in semester one to experiment with your learning style and figure out what works 
I think, yeah. Mohammed, you said that you were surprised by how much writing there was, and I've seen in terms of assessment, but it isn't just essays that uh, we ask you to do, is it? Uh, no, no. So we have, we do have essays. Um, so we have some reflective pieces we have to write. We have some academic pieces we have to write. Um, and then we also have uh, presentations. So um, we've done a group presentation. Um, and one of the presentations was quite interesting because we got to talk about something that was um, interested, something that we were interested in. So like, I think it was a fact, um, a fictional book, a non-fictional book or a program that you that was of interest to you. So it wasn't very like academic. It was more personal. They, was, they wanted to see your presentation skills, um, how well you are. And we also had, um, to, we also got the opportunity to design a po poster for one of our assignments. So there is a range of um, assignments or types of assignments across the course. Uh, there's also an exam, one exam at the end of the year um, on your science knowledge. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's balanced, it's broad. Um, so, and it tests you on all the skills that you, you sort of will need as a future doctor because it's important for you to know how to speak to people, to be confident in speaking to people um, and et cetera. So I think it's, uh, I think it was good. Great. Well, we're coming to the end of our time, so there's a couple of questions to finish off. I mean, you're both coming to you know, finish your gateway years, or progressing on to MBCHB. What are you looking forward to most in moving on to the first year of MBCHB? I think what I'm really, really excited for is m to do more clinical work. So things like placements, um, the clinics. I think that in this year we had a lot of the background information, the preparation to help you. Uh, but also we did get slightly introduced to things like clinical medicine and foundational life sciences, how to work as a doctor in the NHS. But I'm quite looking forward to doing things like placements and being more clinical. Mohammed, what about you? Um, I think yeah, same as same as you. Um, I'm interested in uh, sitting in GP practices in the hospitals. Um, we did we actually did try to get that for uh, this year as well, but because of COVID, um, it wasn't possible. Uh, but um, yeah, I think there's there's going to be two more modules next year, six modules. So whilst it will be intense, I think um, Gateway has prepared as well. Um, I'm excited, I'm interested, and yeah, hopefully it'll go well. I hope so too, I'm sure it will do. So the final question, what did you perhaps to tell everyone, what's your favourite thing about studying Leeds, but also what's your least favourite things? See? Um, my favourite thing about sort of studying in Leeds is how close everything is. You know, you're very close to the city centre, you don't, you're very close to your lecture theatres, libraries, there's so many libraries in Leeds and they're all amazing. I'm sure you'll find your favourite after <laughs> semester one. Um, but also on the, the Gateway course specifically, I loved how we were a small cohort. We got to know your peers and it was just really personal and nice especially when you've moved away from home it's kind of nice to have family really almost like family in Leeds um, and that's what I really liked about studying in the gateway specifically I can't say I've got anything that's least favorite about it I'm very biased towards <laughs> Leeds and do really enjoy it um, and I'm sure you will and I hope you do and if you don't then there is a lot of you know support out there if you're struggling and what's about living in Leeds um, what I like to, about living in Leeds is actually how multicultural it is. Obviously, I come from an Arabic background. Um, I speak Arabic, so it's kind of nice to see people with similar backgrounds, people who can speak your language, your home language. And I love that about Leeds. I think there is a lot of cultures, um, even especially like with the Gateway course this year, there was a variety of people from you know all walks of life. And it was so nice to be everybody and see where they've come from, what they've done. And Mohammed, and last year then, what have been the things that you've liked or least liked? Um, so with Leeds, Leeds being close to home, I think that was, that was probably one of the best things that has happened. Um, I get to have the comfort of my own home and then come in to Leeds as well. So I don't think, I don't think anybody should think commute's a big problem. But we actually have people from like Black, Blackburn that are commuting um, and Manchester. So it's not, it's not too bad. Um, see, come in to Leeds, see how it works for you. Um, and also, I think like when you go down Headingley area, there's a lot of like scenic walks, uh, nice, nice places to go. Um, and I think uh, societies as well, there's a lot going on in Leeds, there's so many events going on. Um, there's, this, should, this should definitely be something that will suit you. Um, and don't be afraid to sort of, 
go to the taster sessions that people uh, that they run. Um, don't be afraid to try new things. Um, I think um, if you're reserved, you might you might find it a bit more difficult to sort of adapt to to lead. So I think that's probably be one of my main things. Um, get stick yourself out there, get involved, and I'm sure you'll find it, find it amazing. So thank you very much to both of you for um, answering the questions today. Um, I hope that answered the questions you have. But if not, please feel free to drop us an email and we'll answer any specific questions that you might have. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you in Leeds at some point.